Welcome back to America Decides. Regardless of who wins the White House, the next president, of course, is going to need help from Congress to get anything significant done. Republicans, as you well know, hold a narrow majority in the House, meaning a small number of races will determine who controls the lower chamber. For more, I'll bring in our Scott McFarland, who joins us from Poughkeepsie, New York, and with the sun setting, that is his L.L. Bean photo shoot all ready to go. Looks spectacular, Scott. Tell me about what races in New York you are most interested in. Yeah, first of all, I'd like some credit for dedication to mission in the program coming to such a difficult place <laughs> at such a difficult time of year. It's absolutely breathtaking in the mid-Hudson Valley of New York at peak foliage season. We're here, though, because forget the blue wall and forget the sun belt. The battle for the U.S. House, this is the battleground state unequivocally so. There are at least five or six very competitive U.S. House races, at least that many in New York. And you'll recall in 2022, Major, several battleground races all went red. And that is why Republicans have the majority, a narrow one in the House now. And if they lose control of those seats this year, that control goes back to the Democrats. Let me run through the five that are closest to where I'm standing. Start off on Long Island. New York's first district is a first-term Republican named Lick, Nick Lelota, running against a Democrat, John Avlon, who's been a cable news fixture through the years. That's a race on Long Island that's drawn a lot of money, drawn a lot of interest. If you go closer to the city, it's New York's fourth district. This one is a whopper. The incumbent, Anthony D'Esposito, up against a formidable challenger in Laura Gillen. It has drawn money. It has drawn a lot of outside interest. And at this point... Neither party is expressing ultimate confidence this thing's in the bag. Come up to the Hudson Valley area. The New York 17th was a very Biden district in 2020. But in 2022, the Republicans grabbed it from the then chair of the Democratic Congressional Committee. Michael Lawler is going for a second term, facing former Congressman Mondaire Jones. These are two people with institutional knowledge. I am standing in the New York 18th district. Pat Ryan won this thing right after the Dobbs decision in a special election on the issue of women's reproductive rights. He is pushing that issue here again in 2024, trying to fend off a formidable Republican challenger, Allison Esposito, who is a former New York police officer. Then to our north, just a skosh, New York's 19th district, another toss-up race. It's First-term Republican Mark Molinaro, who was the Dutchess County executive, a famous man here before he even got to Congress, running against Josh Riley of Binghamton. Josh Riley has outraised the incumbent, and that's the storyline here, Major. Democrats are so bullish on winning some of these red seats, making them blue again, because they are outraising Republicans, even challengers versus incumbents. And, Scott, how much of the national narrative is influencing these House races? A lot of talk of border security, perhaps a disproportionate amount here. So many of these congressional districts in New York, outside of New York City, became purple, became competitive because of emigrants from New York City, people who used to live in the city and didn't want to live in the city any longer. They felt there was a migrant crisis in New York that is now coming to their neighborhoods. You're finding Democrats here. Democrats here trying to counterpunch or get ahead of this and running ads on how they're tough on border security. One of them, Laura Gillen, the one running on Long Island, she did a straight-to-camera commercial saying she is the voice of border security on Long Island. That's the dynamic of border security and immigration in these pivotal races. Ready for his Land's End close-up, Scott McFarlane from Poughkeepsie, New York. Looking marvelous. We thank you, sir.